This tube is a modification of the original cathode ray tube described by Lenard in 1894. This particular tube was designed for operation at 350,000 volts and one milliampere. It consists of uh, an evacuated bulb of ordinary glass and these two metal electrodes. The cathode consists of a tiny tungsten filament set in the bottom of a metal cup. The filament, when heated, emits electrons and the cup serves as a focusing device to direct their motion. The anode consists of a metal tube closed at its outer end by a piece of thin metal foil, the so-called window of the tube. I have here such a window consisting of nickel-iron-chromium alloy, one one-thousandth of an inch thick. This window is supported on this honeycomb structure of molybdenum. When the negative terminal of a high voltage source is connected to the cathode and the positive terminal to the anode, the electrons coming from the hot filament are constrained to move toward the anode. As they pass between the opposing faces of the electrodes, they acquire a velocity determined by the potential difference applied to the electrodes. They then coast through the hollow anode down to the window. If the window is thin enough, they pass right through it with but little loss of velocity and come out into the air. While the beam of electrons may be very small as it emerges from the window, as the electrons collide with the molecules of the air, they are reflected in all directions and in this way the beam soon becomes very greatly extended. When the tube is operated in the dark, the window is seen to be surrounded by a ball of purplish light due to the ionization of the nitrogen of the air. When brought into the beam, many minerals glow with a variety of rich colors. The rapidly moving electrons also bring about a variety of chemical changes. Uh, for example, acetylene gas is transformed into this yellow powder which I have here. This was made by mounting this glass chamber in front of the window and then passing acetylene gas through the chamber while the cathode rays were turned on. The cathode rays bring about more or less permanent color changes in many different substances. Uh, I have here, for example, a rock salt crystal which was rayed over this area which is now black some four years ago that the depth of penetration of the electrons into the crystal was very slight, may be seen from the slight depth to which the color has penetrated into the crystal. With the maximum voltage for which the tube was designed, 350,000, the uh, velocity acquired by the electrons within the tube is about 150,000 miles per second. And their range 
uh, in the air after they have penetrated through the window is about three feet. The cathode rays are in general very destructive to both vegetable and animal tissues. Wherever they come in contact with matter, X-rays are produced. 